Okay, so obviously this looks terrible. I've made a huge mistake. This could be a shit show. Okay, here's the premise. Can one 3D artist recreate a scene from Star Wars in less than a week? On this channel over the last year, I've recreated a bunch of movies. I did Jurassic Park, I did Terminator, and I did Blade Runner. I've always wanted to do Star Wars, but here's the problem. I only have about five, maybe six days free in my schedule this month, and I have to get it done in that time. Can I do it? Honestly, I don't know. This could be a shit show. Let's find out. Before we begin, I just want to quickly shout out NVIDIA and SCAN for making this video possible. I'm making this whole animation on my workbench machine, which has two hefty RTX 3090s inside of it, and I'm going to be really relying on all the RTX Studio tools to get this thing made in time. If you've never heard of NVIDIA's RTX Studio program, it's an initiative to empower artists with the best creative tools possible, not only with hardware solutions, but with the right software to back it up. Optics super fast rendering, optics AID noising, nano VDB volumetrics, all of these things are here thanks to the studio program. Scan has a really great range of studio certified devices, which means they're tested by NVIDIA to ensure that they give you the best creative performance possible in apps like Blender, Cinema 4D and Photoshop. I'll leave a link in the description where you can see Scan's whole range of studio devices. So the scene that I'm aiming to recreate is the shot from Empire Strikes Back where Yoda lifts the X-Wing out of the swamp. Now I know from experience that human characters and shots like this can really make or break the whole scene. So I'm going to start off with Luke Skywalker to make sure I can get that character right. Obviously I don't have time to sculpt that character from scratch, so I'm going to need another solution. I'm going to be using a program called Face Builder to create the head for me. Face Builder basically generates a copy of a head just by lining up some pin markers with photographs of a person's face. The results aren't amazing, but they're not too bad and from a distance it should be at least passable. Now one cool feature of this app is the fact that it can automatically generate blend shapes, which in Blender we call shape keys. These are basically different variations of a mesh that we can use to add some basic animations. So now we've got Luke's head, we're going to need a body. To make that, I'm just going to Frankenstein this head onto a body from a really handy add-on in Blender called Human Generator. This thing works kind of like the character creation screen on a video game. You just change some sliders and things and you can alter the proportion of the character and you can even give it claws. Okay, so next off we need to finish off Luke with some animations and some clothing. I'm going to be using Adobe's Mixamo website to rig the character and animate him. It automatically generates a rig bone system for a character mesh and it has dozens of animations to choose from which can automatically be added to any character. Now that's good news for me because I really suck at animating characters, it's something I have hardly any experience with. And for the hair, I'm just going to add some particle systems to the scalp and groom it roughly into shape. It does go through a phase where it looks a little bit scary for a while but eventually I managed to get everything to come together. Finally, we need to give Luke some proper clothing. I'm using a program called Marvelous Designer for this. It's a tool that can create and simulate cloth meshes and is head and shoulders better than anything Blender has to offer with its own cloth system. If you watched the video I made earlier this year called Awakening the Old God, you'll know that I had a huge list of problems just trying to give the characters some really basic clothing. It was honestly just a huge pain in the arse to work with. Marvelous Designer is a dream to work with in comparison. I mean, the native performance of this app was already very good, but the newer versions are GPU accelerated for cloth simulations. That means that if you have a powerful GPU like this RTX 3090, you get basically real-time performance with cloth simulations right in the viewport, which makes it so much easier to work with. I cannot stress it enough. Okay, so it's day two, and so far things are going pretty well. I'm going to start working on the first actual shot now, and for that I need a model of R2-D2. Luckily I've managed to find a pretty good one online. I just enabled the optics viewport denoiser while I was animating R2-D2 and I was pretty blown away by the fact that you can basically preview fully ray traced animations in real time these days. Now this isn't exactly a basic scene, I've got a fairly dense forest area of trees, I have a photo scan element for the floor and I have volumetric mist. <sighs> oh, okay so I've just realised that I've made a huge mistake. I've just finished rendering out this shot of R2-D2 and I forgot to add something really important. 
On this close-up shot, you can see that R2-D2's little eye piece is looking all over the place as the X-Wing comes out of the water. Now, I know that might seem fairly inconsequential, but when you have a close-up on a character that's basically expressionist, any little small body language things like that are actually really important. So not only did I not animate this originally, but I didn't even build the ability to move this eyepiece into the rig that I made. So I need to sit down and figure out how the hell I'm going to add that to this shot without just redoing the whole thing. Okay, so I think I've got it. If I just select the eye and I disconnect it from the main body, it should just inherit the same animation as the rest of the mesh. Now, if I move the pivot point of the eye right to the back, I should be able to just add new rotational information on top of the already in place animation that's there. And I don't even have to do this part manually. I can just add noise modifiers to the various rotational directions. That'll just swing the eyepiece around in random directions all over the place. Then it's time to re-render this shot. So to animate the final shot of Luke kind of walking backwards, I'm not going to be able to rely on mixed MoMA animations. They just don't have anything like what I need. I need another solution. So I'm going to try out a different tool called Motion Builder, which is a web-based tool. It claims to be able to animate a character based off just one piece of video footage. So let's see how well that does. This is the shot inside Motion Builder. It doesn't exactly look like a great match to me. Let's see if we can take it into the blender and fix things up a little. Okay, so obviously this looks terrible. I've been working on this shot for a while now and it still just looks bad. You know, people keep telling me that AI is just about to put all us 3D artists out of work. Looking at this, I'm not too worried yet. I've actually run out of free credits for Motion Builder, which means that I can't do any more free passes on this shot, but I don't have time to animate this by hand, so I really need to make this work. So I'm just gonna have to take out a subscription to Motion Builder for this month, try it with some different footage, and hopefully one of them will look okay, and I'll do a better job. Right, so I think I might have something. I ran the tool a few more times, and I've finally got one that isn't incredibly janky. It's still kinda janky, but I'm okay with that. I'm making nine shots in a week. I can't exactly expect perfection. Kind of janky you'll have to do. Right, so we're on day four now and I'm gonna start with the X-Wing. I'm actually finding it pretty hard to find a suitable model of an X-Wing online. They're all either really low resolution, they have low resolution textures, or it's just a slightly different model of X-Wing and hardly any of them have landing gears, which I need. But eventually I found this little diorama model of an X-Wing in a hangar. So I'm just going to delete all the stuff that I don't need, rework the materials for this model, and it should look okay. I'm quite impressed that they even included this little lip along the nose of the X-Wing. That's a detail that I've noticed is missing from almost all the models. Proper water simulations can take hundreds of hours, which is frankly time that I do not have. So I'm going to have to fake the water for the shot of the X-Wing coming out of the swamp. To make the water surface itself, I'm going to add a plane and I'm just going to give it tons and tons of subdivisions. Then I'm going to use a tool called Dynamic Paint to add some ripples in the water whenever it touches the landing gear as it emerges. Now adding this much geometry to a plane will really increase the memory usage when it comes to render time. But luckily these RTX 3090s that I've got have a massive VRAM allocation of 24GB each, so that hopefully shouldn't be an issue. Now for the falling streams of water that are coming out of the X-Wing, I'm going to need a workaround too. Blender has something in it called metaballs, which are basically spheres that merge together when they get close. I'm going to add a particle system to the X-Wing so that some random particles spew out as it comes out of the water, and I'm going to use it to emit metaballs. They should cling together, and if I give them a kind of glass water material, hopefully it should look kind of like a stream of disturbed water. Okay, so I've got about two full days left to work on this project. I still need a model of Yoda. I still need to put claws on them, I still need to animate them, and I need to render out about four shots that he's in. And I was just about to go on camera to say that I'm having a real nightmare finding good models of Yoda when I remembered a Corridor Digital video from a few months ago where they said this. All the models for the Star Wars universe from Star Wars Battlefront 2 are online and available for download for free. Hmm, what do you know? They were right. You just have to click on buttons that are in Russian and you don't necessarily know what you're agreeing to, but it's worth it. 
Okay, so this model of Yoda was obviously made for a video game. So it's going to take quite a lot of work to get it up to production quality that I'm happy with. I've spent about half a day so far just tweaking and repainting the textures and materials to get it looking a little bit more like the old school puppet, but it still needs some more work. The hair system here are just hair cards. These are really common in games. It's basically just a bunch of pictures of hairs with transparent backgrounds. I'm going to replace that hair with an actual particle system and I'm going to sculpt on top of the model to try and get as close to the puppet as I possibly can. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some basic shape keys so I can add some little animations to Yoda's face without having to make a whole facial bone rig. I've also added a cloak to Yoda in Marvelous Designer and I've given that a hair particle system to replace some of the loose threads. I'm really impressed with how well Blender and the optics rendering can handle this scene. There's 200,000 child particles just on the robe, never mind on Yoda himself, and it's rendering out in under 20 seconds per frame, which is fabulous. Okay, so right at the last minute, I've just noticed that in one of these shots, you can see Yoda's cane, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna quickly model out one of those and I'm gonna stick it in his hand. To make it actually look like he's holding the cane, I'm gonna move the pivot point of the object down to its base, and we're gonna add something called a damp track constraint, which basically means that whenever the hand moves around, the top of the cane should follow it, while the bottom will stay in place like it's jammed into the ground. Okay, so with all that work done, I think we're finished. Here's a scene from Star Wars made by one dude in a week. Now that whole thing is a little bit more impressive with the original audio. I obviously had to recreate the track um, because frankly, Disney has a whole army of lawyers and like I didn't even finish my law degree, so I don't want to get sued. So I changed the audio, but other than that, I'm calling that a success. For one week's worth of work, I'm pretty happy with that. I thought Yoda came out looking really good. Yeah, Luke Skywalker was a little bit janky. That was mostly my fault. Uh, I assumed Mixamo would have some animations quite similar. To what I needed and I also as a backup I thought that AI motion capture thing was a little bit more advanced than it actually is but overall yeah, I'm a happy man. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to find Scan's whole range of RTX Studio devices they've got laptops they've got desktops they've got standalone GPUs. Treat yourself you deserve it. <laughs>